In this video, I will describe the differences between the exploratory factor analysis, abbreviated as EFA, and the confirmatory factor analysis, abbreviated as CFA. What are the differences between two methods, and when to use each method at any stage of survey or questionnaire or scale development? So, what is the difference between CFA and EFA? CFA and EFA both are similar statistical techniques. Both are multivariate statistical method. Multivariate mean there are several variables uh, or items or questions. So it is a multivariate statistical method that is used to examine how well observed variables represent a number of constructs or factors. So you do have a collection or a group of items or questions or variables or the same meaning when developing a questionnaire or a survey and those variables need to be sorted into factors or in another word constructs in efa the data is explored initially and examined and the number of factors or constructs representing data are determined so in the efa uh, the number of factors that represent the set of uh, variables or items are explored, examined, assessed, identified in EFA all the observed or measured items or variables are associated or related to specific latent factors. So each factors will be represented by certain number of items or questions or variables. So in EFA the factor and the number of variables that represent that factor or load to that factors are determined. Thus, a model can be constructed representing the structure of the factors with the items associated with the factor. On the other hand, the CFA is a statistical method, multivariate statistical method that is used post performing the EFA and it is used to confirm or disconfirm the factor structure or the model structure or the hypothesized model that have in it the number of the factors and the number of items that is linked or associated to a specific factor. So statistician can specify the number of factors representing the data and which variable is associated with which latent factor. So the statistician will build up a model that have in it certain number of factors and how many items that represent that factor. So in EFA, the method is more suitable proper than CFA in the initial stages of questionnaire or survey or scale development. So when you at a early stage of developing the questionnaire, then the EFA is the one to go for. As if you uh, commit any mistake uh, during the determination of the number of factors and items linked to the specific factors in the EFA incorrect defining of the number of factors at early stage of the scale development cannot be detected by CFA. However, in EFA, it is possible to um, uh, redo the analysis, omit certain items or variables, rebuild the um, structure of the factors with the items loading to the factor. So there is a possibility for modification and changing 
the structure of the model or the factors. However, in CFA, this cannot be done as the uh, uh, factor numbers and the items numbers have to be determined in advance before performing the CFA. So CFA does not uh, show how well items load into undefined factors. So they have to be or there have to be a model for the structure of each individual factor and the CFA cannot show how well the items load into undefined factors. CFA is used at a later stage or stages of scale development or questionnaire development. So it's not an early stage. EFA is an early stage. The CFA is a late stage. The CFA is used for confirmation of a specific factor structure based on EFA. So EFA will determine the number of factors and the number of items. The EFA will suggest propose a model for the data. Then the CFA will confirm or disconfirm the structure of the model and the number of the factors with the items loading into it. Though CFA is a confirmatory factor analysis method, it is not absolute confirmatory analysis as there is a window for modification via the, using the modification indices, which is used in CFA as exploratory. What does that mean? That means you could have a possibility to modify the structure of the um, model by omitting specific items that does not well fit or represent the factor structure. So modification indices can improve how well the model fit the data. Though there are certain differences between the two methods, again, EFA is an early stage, CFA is a later stage EFA can be performed without any knowledge or hypothesis or information about the structure the number of the factors and the number of items linked to specific factors in CFA things have to be clear and well defined in advance a model has to be uh, built sub uh, uh, proposed a hypothesized structure for the data with the number of factors and the number of items have to be clear when performing the CFA. Though the CFA has a flexibility in, in a way that it is possible to omit certain items that does not uh, or do not uh, represent well or load well into certain or specific factors. So EFA is used when researchers don't have a clear understanding or hypothesis about the structure of the factor. There is no model for the data. EFA is used to explore and uncover those factors that might exist within these measurable variables. So you have a set of data, then the EFA will sort the items into factors and those factors will have specific items load into those factors. And that is why it is called exploratory factor analysis. For model specification, EFA does not have a pre-specified factor structure or a model or a number of factors. It's just only uh, start with a collection of items to sort these items into factors, those factors uh, represented by specific or certain items. So the EFA explores various factor structure to identify most suitable model that explain the measurable items or data. So it is an exploratory 
factor analysis to try to define, determine, identify how many factors represent the data and how many items loads. So EFA is data driven. CFA is hypothesis driven. So this is the major difference between both. So EFA is data driven. It allows for the identification of patterns and relationships within data without any limitation, without any restrictions, without any predefined structure for the factors or the number of the factors and the items that load to the factors. So EFA presumes that any observed variable may be related with any factors. So the EFA assumes at the beginning that any items can be associated with any factors and then the uh, if EFA will determine and define which items or item will, uh, will is associated with a factor. When developing a scale, statisticians should use EFA first before using the CFA. So EFA first, then move to CFA. And to do CFA, you need a new set of data to confirm your uh, initial proposed hypothesis or a model for the data that is performed uh, for in a, uh, using EFA. So EFA is important for defining the underlying factors for a set of measured variables. EFA requires the researcher to make important decisions on how to conduct the analysis as there is no one set method. So the researcher will take the data, load them into the software, perform EFA and then EFA will uh, produce uh, an initial proposition for the model or the structure of the factors with the items in it. There is a window for modification until reaching the stage that uh, uh, the items load highly into factors. The CFA on the other hand is hypothesis driven. There have to be a predefined model or a hypothesis about the structure of the factors and the items or variables that load into the factors. So the CFA allows the researcher to test the hypothesis that is already generated from performing EFA uh, that the relationship between the observed or measured items and their underlying latent factors which is could be uh, uh, described as a construct. Constructs and the objective of the CFA is to test this hypothesis that there is a relationship between items and latent factors. So the factor structure uh, or the model is already determined via the EFA. So the message here is that EFA has to be done first, then the CFA can be performed later on a new set of data to confirm or disconfirm the initial uh, proposed uh, model for the structure of the factors that represent the data. If you find this video useful, do subscribe to the channel, leave any comment in the indicated uh, box and activate the notification bell to receive the recent and uh, latest release uh, into the channel of uh, several different video clip and click on the like icon and share the video link with others so the channel can expand and improve to include a large scope of uh, different statistical method and how to analyze data using uh, several different uh, statistical packages such as SPSS, Excel, Stata, Jamovi, R Statistic, or Statistics, Graphpad, Prism, GPower, Python, and Revman. 
if you are a student or a researcher and you have a data whether it is um, um, quantitative all qualitative and you want to perform a statistical uh, analysis on that data using any of the softwares listed here whether it's SPSS, Excel, Stata, Jamovi, R Statistics, Graftad, Prism, Revman, GMP, Python then do contact me to arrange for either a one-to-one -one private tutor session or a training course uh, on any of these uh, statistical packages. My contact details are given here. So don't hesitate to uh, write to me or email me if you need uh, a private one-to-one uh, -one, uh, tutoring or a training course.